to my channel, Tara. It's Thank lovely you. to have you. Uh, we're talking to Tara today. She is a woman of many talents. She used to be an actress, a model. Now you're a writer. Mm -hmm. And uh, she has a little boy on the, on the autism spectrum and she does advocacy for autism. Um, Tara, tell me a little bit about um, when you found out that your son has autism and how did you actually understand that you know there was something going on there? Well, I think when he was about 16 to 17 months, I noticed his eye contact started to go and he wasn't listening to me. And he started to be frightened of things and he would tend to go under the table and he started to flap his hands quite a lot. And originally I thought he was going deaf because he would do this a lot and he wasn't responding to his name. So I took him to the GP, to the doctor, and I said, I think my son's going deaf, he's not listening to me. And he said, oh no, he's not deaf, Everyone, every child develops differently. And because he was my first child, I didn't know any different. So I went home and again, I was like, looking at all the other children in the playground going, my son's not doing this. So I went back and again they said no. And I said, look, just refer him to the ear, ear nose, and throat department and let me see because I, I still think there's something not right here. So reluctantly they sent me on to the ENT department. And when we were in there um, doing the hearing test, Dylan knew where everything was. His hearing was perfect. And so when I was came out of the exam room, a uh, pediatric doctor said, do you mind if I have a quick chat to you? And when we went in, they had obviously been observing him and they expressed um, that maybe he could be on the autistic spectrum. And obviously I was a bit like, I think they said it was a, the social, social spectrum. And I went, social spectrum? Like he wants friends or what do you kind of mean? I wasn't quite sure. You hadn't um, heard of the word autism by then? No, they didn't use the word autism. They okay. tend not to use that word now. They kind of give you other words around it. And before, as soon as he said it, I kind of, in my head went, you mean autism? And he went, well, yeah, we're just not allowed to say it. Um, so that was really our first kind of introduction. And he had just turned two. Okay. And um, as a mom, as a new mom, it mm -hmm. was your first child, not being prepared for that. How did you feel when the doctor mentioned that? Oh, it just shakes your whole world, doesn't it? You know, this perfect, your perfect baby, your perfect child has just been told. And I think what's the scariest thing is the unknown. Absolutely. It's the not knowing. Absolutely. You know, you're thinking autism. I think back then, it was eight years ago now, he got diagnosed. Mm -hmm. The only thing I could refer it to was that film, The Rain Man. That's what a lot of people say. And, and that's what everyone's saying. And I'm thinking, well, what does that mean for him? What does that mean? And, and I, I did actually think that when I got that diagnosis, when we got the official diagnosis, I thought it was somehow going to change him. He never changed. And I think that's what I try and tell people. The, the diagnosis doesn't change your child. Your child is still the same child. It's still your child. You, it's you who has to change your pattern and your thinking of how you can go about helping them and your expectations, and your expectations of them. Exactly. You're very open, obviously. You talk about everything very openly, which yeah. I really admire about you. And uh, you talked about, in one of your videos, you talked about how autism affected your relationship with mm. your husband. And um, I know that when I listened to your story, I thought to myself, this sounds so familiar. And I know many moms, because obviously I'm in contact with a lot of moms who have children on the spectrum. And when they talk to me, the story, your story was very similar to many women's stories. Mm -hmm. But not everybody has the courage to get out there and publicly talk about it. And this is what I want to talk about today, that yes, autism affects relationships. Yes, autism, um, you know, makes it difficult for mm -hmm. parents to, you know, to deal with it and to deal with each other. Uh, but there, there are different aspects to it. And I just wanted to go through a few of these things with you. Mm -hmm. um, what is the main thing that causes this problem in the relationship when you get the diagnosis? I think the main one is communication. And it's how we deal with things and how we deal with problems that arise. And obviously, when you have a child with any kind of disability or any kind of issue or whatever it is, it puts extra strain. Being married's hard anyway, right? I mean, <laughs> being in a relationship is hard. Being a parent is hard. And then you add on the extra stress. The statistics are that 80% of relationships break down uh, with a child on the, on the spectrum. And I think the reason why I'm so honest and open about my relationship is um, 
is to try and help other people to avoid the pitfalls because we did separate. We separated for a year and a half. It was really hard. It was really hard on us. It was the most honest and raw conversation we've ever had. We both ended up in tears. Everyone deals with grief in a different way. And I'm going to use the word grief because you do grieve the you child grieve, that you yes, thought you were going to have. It's not that we don't love our children. We don't blame them. It's not like you're, it's not like you're grieving a death of a child, but you're grieving. You actually are grieving what you thought your child was going to be. Absolutely. And that's okay. It's okay to cry. It's okay to be like, I'm going to feel sorry for myself right now because I'm allowed to, but everyone deals with that differently. So for me, I was like, right, what am I going to do? I'm going to do this, 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 this. And I became like a bull in a china shop. I would not stop. And Andrew was, was still in denial phase. He was still like, no, no, he's, he's only two. He's only three. You know, he's He'll just, needs, he needs more discipline. He, he needs this, he needs that. And I was thinking, you're just Mm, so many words I could use for him, but I won't say it on camera. You just don't but get it. You just don't get it. And we clashed. And we clashed over disciplining Dylan. Because I was saying he's not being naughty. It's this. And you go, oh, no, you can still discipline a child with autism, you know. And, and he needs to know that that's not right. And I'm like, well, yeah, I know what you're saying, but he's not being naughty because of that. It's because you got a bright light on he doesn't like it or the noise over there or the washing machine is upsetting him so we every parent deals with things differently, differently. and where Andrew and I broke down was no sleep and it was like Absolutely. I've been up with Dylan all night why can't you get up in the morning with him and he's like well I go to work every day and I do this and I'm bringing you know because I had to give up my job um I was working as an actress at the time and I gave it up so I could be home with Dylan I didn't want to be anywhere else I wanted to be with him I wanted to help him. So the financial strain was big on our family because all of a sudden we were down to one income. And Andrew was like, the way he dealt with it was work, this, this, this and this. And then we started arguing and then he dealt with it by drinking too much. And then I would, we were just bickering, just bickering. And it just grew and grew and grew to a point where I was beginning to hate him. And I didn't want to hate him because we have to co-parent. And I know there are relationships that have broken down and if that's, if that's what's best for you and for your child, then that's what's meant to be. But we needed space. Okay. And so he moved out. But we kept the, the family unit together. We made sure that Dylan and Luca felt loved, felt protected. We still met up on a Sunday. That was our day for family. And then on the weekend that Andrew had the children, and I had to learn that, to leave Dylan with his father. And trust that And trust okay. that it was going to be okay. So was so hard. I it was imagine. really tough. Because you think you're the autism expert and he's not. I'm my child's it? expert. Exactly. You know, he couldn't speak. I knew what he wanted, exactly. but he, he didn't. So well. But I really had to push myself out of that comfort zone and I needed space because I was burnt Absolutely. out. I was burnt out. I didn't even know who I was anymore. If you asked me if I wanted tea or water, I'd just kind of look at you blankly. I didn't even know. Didn't even know if I was thirsty or hungry. You know, and I needed that breakaway, and I knew that if Dylan was going to be safe and cared for and fed, it was okay. He didn't need everything else, because I dealt with that 99% of the time, but that 1% I needed for me, and I needed to work on my own self. And through learning about myself, and I did shut Andrew out. I had no room for him. It was me and Dylan, me and Dylan. So any time Andrew tried to interact with Dylan, no, you're doing that wrong. Nope, you're doing it wrong. You don't know how to do that. And so he, so the poor guy tried to get close to his son, but I wouldn't let him, you know? And I think it was only when I was writing my book, um, Coming Home to Autism, that I was writing the parent section and Andrew had taken the kids off for the weekend so I could actually focus on writing because my publisher was going, come on, is the book <laughs> finished yet? And I was like, no. And when I was writing the parent section, I just started crying. Oh. And I just phoned up Andrew and I said, I, I am sorry, I am. I, I didn't give you that time with him and I did shut you out. And it still makes me feel emotional now talking about oh. it. And he cried and he was like, well, you know, by me admitting to him, that maybe the 1% I wasn't correct. <laughs> just 1%. I don't, I'm just 1%. Don't, go, don't, don't run with that too far. I've said 99 yeah, I've said that, Exactly. <laughs> the 1% that I, I, I didn't get it right, <sighs> he then said to me, I'm sorry. Oh, that's you know, so nice. I'm sorry. And I, I, I didn't deal with it. And so then he got therapy to get through that. And it's still a work in progress. You know, of we're course. still, you know, we still argue what we think is best for our kids, as most parents do. Um, but we slowly worked through it. There was one more thing that 
quite affected your relationship with Andrew, which I forgot to talk about. And that's when you realized that Andrew might be on the spectrum mm. and you started blaming him, thinking that, well, because you might be on the spectrum, that's why my mm. son has it, which is very common, by the way. A lot mm. of families with children on the spectrum, after they get a diagnosis for their child, they realize that one or both parents are on the spectrum mm. and they live with it like their whole life mm. without knowing. Can you tell me about that, please? Well, I think there were certain things in our relationship that I'd I'd be like, oh, he's so frustrating or doing this or he likes this or like that. And, and the more I started to learn about Dylan and learn about his traits, the more I started to look at Andrew and be a bit like, you do that. You do that. I mean, come on, I think most men are on the spectrum, really. If I look at this, it's familiar, actually. It's I know. Very common I know. Your son, it is. And um, I was like, oh, okay. And, and I, I kept making little comments and being like, well, you kind of do that. And then, you know, do you find things difficult? And he'd be like, no, 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 But then as we started learning more and more about Dylan, I think Andrew actually recognized different aspects in himself. Mm -hmm. And only last year, Andrew got diagnosed with ADHD, even though it was suspected as a child. I mean, they didn't really, they didn't really diagnose anything, you know, back 30 years ago. Sorry, I just told Andrew's age. <laughs> <laughs> He's much older than me. Um, but they didn't really diagnose things back then. So he got his diagnosis of ADHD, which is on the spectrum, uh, last year. And for him, it was like, Oh, was it really? I get it. Was it relieving, or was it? It was relieving for him. That's the thing. A lot of adults find it because he went. I, I now know why I, my thoughts consume me, or I get, you know, so anxious, or you know, all these things made sense to him. He's like, I'm not weird. I understand this now, and I think by learning more about That's himself, sweet. he had more compassion for Dylan a little bit as well and connecting to him and connecting to him, him yeah better. understanding him a bit better you had your first child being on the spectrum with all the challenges that you had and then finding out that your husband might be on the spectrum or at least speculating it at the time um, you went on and had two more children after that and I know this is the very big question for a lot of parents yeah. who have children on the spectrum that uh, what if my next child has autism or is there a guarantee that you know I can have more healthy children? Mm -hmm. um, can you tell me how that happened? I mean, what did you think, and how did you have the confidence to go ahead and have more children? Um, well, it's interesting because when Dylan got diagnosed, the the doctor that diagnosed him said, "Are you thinking of having any more children?" Because if you have another boy, they said, there's an 18 percent more chance it will be on the spectrum to another child. And this kind of made me a little bit upset that they even said that because for me, the way I thought is, you know, the autism spectrum is a difficulty connecting with other people, uh, socially connecting, uh, maybe make, we find it hard to make friends. So for me, I had the opposite. I was like, right, I'm going to have as many children as my body will allow me so I can have friends for Dylan. I wanted siblings that knew him and loved him for who he is and would be there to support each other and if they were on the spectrum too I was willing to take that chance because I selfishly wanted more children and we went on to have Luca who has just been diagnosed with ADHD himself and we have Naya Rose who's two so I got my little girl in the end but they they're such a great little team you know and I when Luca got his diagnosis of ADHD uh, they asked me because for many years, Luca has said to me, why don't I have autism, mum? Please, I want autism too. Because oh, in our so family, we've made autism such a cool thing. You know, we've never been shy about it. We've always told Dylan about it. It's like a, you know, it's, they're healthy children. They're not sick. Autism is a neurologically, is a neurological difference. Exactly. They think a different way to us. It's not better, worse, normal, not normal. It's just what it is. And this is what we've always told Dylan. You know, his brother's got red hair, he's got autism, you know, so we've always done this. So Luca was like, but I want autism, I, I don't want that. And so when he got diagnosed with ADHD, I said, well, it, it is on the spectrum. And Dylan and Luca looked at each other and Dylan goes, you're on the spectrum too, come here. And they oh, hugged and they had this, and I was like, yay, it's cool to be on the spectrum. And my head, I'm going, oh my gosh, help me. <laughs> but, you know, oh, yes, so it sweet. is. It does make parenting a little bit harder. Did it put me off having more children? No, because I'm not gonna be around forever. 
I'm not as long as much as we'd love to be there to protect our children, to look after our children. So who's going to be there for Dylan? His, His siblings. siblings. Absolutely. And if they're together, you know, whether they need a carer for the rest of their lives, as I know a lot of children might do, might need a carer for the rest of but their lives. But they still have the siblings to give them love. They and have support. their siblings. Absolutely. You know. I really admire your openness and admire how honest you are about these things. And I'm sure that you you'll be helping many, many people. And you've written a book about autism. Mm -hmm. And all your findings and experiences, everything is in the book. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to put the link for her book and her YouTube channel that you really have to check out in the description description box. Um, and hopefully we'll have you more in the show. Yeah, and thank you so much for having me in your beautiful oh, home. And it's been so lovely you. to meet you. It's so, so lovely to meet you. you. It was really, really lovely talking to you. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Hi. 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 Sorry, we're having you. Here.